So it's Friday afternoon at the National Honey Show and we have Andrew here from quite a long way away who's taken the time and trouble to come and join us to give some lectures at the show. Andrew, tell us about your journey down here. A long one, a long one. Um, it's probably taken me uh, longer than um, say the likes of Randy Oliver coming over from California. So in fact, talk... probably both of the speakers from the States got here more uh, easily and quicker. So I'm a week away. Um, we've only three ferries a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You ferries so, Monday, Wednesday and Friday. This is from a Hebridean island. Yeah, up to Oban and overnight in Oban, train to Glasgow, train down to London. Um, loads of problems on that, into Waterloo, <laughs> a nightmare in Waterloo. And remember, this is somebody who's <laughs> living on an island with 120 folk. Um, yeah, it's a long way, uh, a different way too. But here we are, and it's great uh, for me because uh, I'm able to, to talk to a wide variety of beekeepers as well as doing my lectures. So and, you've, you've, are you enjoying the show as well? Absolutely, absolutely, yes. I, I mean, it, it's, uh, there are all sorts of folk with different uh, levels of beekeeping, different experiences of beekeeping. And the common interest, of course, is are the bees, you know. Um, I'm probably one of the more uh, unusual uh, beekeepers in in Britain because of my isolation and I'm very lucky to have an isolated pro uh, population of our native bee. Um, quite unusual um, and uh, very fortunate, disease free, uh, no varroa, uh, no EFB and uh, so far, have been able to keep it by it being a reserve, a uh, 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 part of the uh, Scottish legislation is the Collinsey and Orensey Black Bee Reserve. And uh, as long as uh, with vigilance, I make sure people don't bring uh, bees accidentally, for example, in their car, a beekeeper would come on holiday. Uh, the last thing they would want to do is go through their bees, swarm inspection, um, pull everything out of the back of the car, all the holiday stuff goes in, but there are half a dozen bees in the corner left. Come to call and say, it's a lovely sunny day, the bees wake up, fly, and they have varroa on them. That could be one way of, of the bees, of, of varroa, for example. Coming yes. in. But um, no, I'm I'm uh, very different to um, most beekeepers. But then um, I've just been at a lecture there on Asian hornet, and uh, we're starting to see a lot of cruise ships coming up the west coast. Obens now. Uh, Is that a recent thing? Yes, we've seen this the last. Really, since COVID, I and I think um, in a way the Hebrides, Orkney, Shetland have become known to cruise operators, right. and we're seeing quite large cruise ships coming into. But now we were just told there that uh, uh, Asian Hornet appears regularly on the channel ferries and has been found on a cruise ship. So that would be one way and it comes into uh, the west coast of Scotland. You know, leapfrogs right across. So it, these are the, 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 or the value of somebody living in a remote place to come and listen to folks who have got a lot of experience of different aspects of beekeeping that I don't have. And I'm, you know, right out of the loop um, yes. of, uh, in remoteness. 
And Colonsai itself is quite an attractive destination because it's a bit unusual, isn't it, in the Hebrides? Yeah, I mean, it's a lovely corner of the world. Uh, geographically small, but very mixed in habitat. So we have on the island, uh, I think it's just short of 60% of all UK wildflowers because we range from what would be at the top of um, Scottish mountains because of wind. It equates to that right down. We've got woodland, um, agricultural land, and then, of course, all your maritime plants. And so there's plenty of forage throughout the year. Luckily, that way. We have a, a wide range of forage and important in, in my lectures, I emphasize so much pollen, 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 pollen. It's not stressed enough in, in beekeeping. I think it's the key, key to health, um, key to bee health and overstocking. Um, I think uh, so that's why I'm so lucky. I control the stock numbers. I don't want to overstock thin bee milk, yes. weak stock of bees, and uh, then that's when the disease starts appearing. You know, so we're very lucky. Uh, um, it's, uh, but there are difficulties as well. You know, you're isolated. You're uh, working against the elements yes. as well, you know, so it's a balance. That, that, yes. uh, you know. And you're giving another lecture at four o'clock this afternoon? Yes, on um, nuclei. Mike Palmer uh, was speaking earlier this morning and I was saying to Mike, he kind of stole my thunder a wee bit. Because <laughs> I've got, but you I've have got different to, circumstances, don't you? Yeah, and that's different the key. It's scale. Yes. Um, it, it's all scale. Um, you know, he's, he's 1,500 uh, hides and 60 hides, you know. Yes. But the important bit is uh, nuclear. If you're going to be uh, self-sustaining, uh, nuclear are the key. Mm -hmm. And I've been self-sustaining for 40 years. And without nuclear, you can't go anywhere. And it's that. What I'm trying to do and say in the lectures is that everybody should have nuclei. And it's well, not taught enough in, a, in, in beekeeping. It's like you, you go to, in, have a look at, at photos uh, of uh, uh, an association meeting, right? And you will see a group of people often with, you know, Veils, Wellington boots, gloves, the whole bit. They're around a hive. You'll never see them around a nucleus with their gloves off because that's great for teaching. Um, you know, you'll not get the aggression of a nucleus that you would get of a, a, a strong hive of bees. And so it's, it's it's become habitual if you see what I mean. It's become yeah. it, you got to get into hive. Yeah. You couldn't get into right. This let's start with this and start with a nuclear. So do you emphasise that in the courses that you run on your own? Absolutely, yes. gosh yes. I, I, the first thing I do when I've got a beginner's course is we go and look at a nuclear. That's very interesting. Yes. yes, and and by the end of the week, I want everyone to take their gloves off and catch drones. And I can pretty well get everyone at the end of a weekend and mark drones. And and suddenly they, when they see one take their gloves off, it's like, oh, <laughs> you can do it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and or no, she could do it. You're dead right. If, if I can get a she to do it, the boys are <laughs> <laughs> the, challenge. the challenge. Absolutely. OK, then. Well, it's been lovely talking to you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. We hope that if you can't get to see Andrew's lecture in person this afternoon, that you will enjoy it on YouTube later on throughout the year. Lovely, and thank you.